Hello everyone, i um, going to be playing nine holes this time and uh, I would like you, I would like to show you how I play a full nine holes uh, and possibly give you some tips and tricks on how to make your game better so sit back and enjoy I'll be talking you through each of the shots I play hopefully help make you a better player alright this is quite funny I actually just played this guy on nine holes um, prior to this game and uh, I beat this guy he forfeited after three holes uh, I was actually recording a video but then I decided not to upload it because uh, I had made a few um, errors in the video and some things weren't recording when I thought they were recording so I decided to trash the video and make a new one and now ironically I get the same opponent <laughs> I'm gonna just have a quick chat to him. We just played and you forfeited. And we'll wait for his confirmation on that. If he replies. Alright, anyway, while we wait for him to reply, I'll be aiming my shot 300, 300 yards about in the middle of the fairway. This fairway, when the ball hits, it'll bounce to the left. And yes, we did. Mm -hmm. All right, anyway, here we go. And for some reason, my phone was lagging. It caused me to miss the ding there just a little bit. But I'm safe. And as I said, it that does roll heavily to the That's left. The garden spot. Anyway, we have pretty good conditions now. The uh, the hole, the, the the wind conditions are very very light, so there won't be that much distance adjusting when we play our shots to the flags. All right, eighty-seven yards should be an easy wedge. In the previous hole, he was uh, overco overcooking his shots. All his approach shots were landing 7 to 10 yards beyond the flag. Um, I don't know if he's going to learn from that. A pitching wedge is too strong a club for this particular distance, unless he's going to reduce the power. So here we see, and now he's gotten it close. That's a good shot. Alright, so I'm going to be using almost a full 80 yards power here. Also planning to get it close. I need to go a bit more to the right to compensate for the wind. Uh, we'll be adding about, uh, let's do it about almost full power. This is close, as I expected it to be. Spin back into the hole, come on. Alright, so we're both going to make birdies. Easy birdies. Alright, a side wind. We'll be hitting into that dog leg that goes to the right and then to the left again. We'll be landing it around about just in front of that dog leg. Yeah, three, 340 is too much. So we're going to land about here in the middle of the fairway at about 315. Oh, 
All right, we've got just over 320. That's a huge drive. I love you. All right, my opponent has got a very lofty driver. Those uh, shots do go very high at the cost of a That's bit of a distance. All right, so he's got 229 to the to the flag. That's going to leave him with a three iron or a three wood, depending on what irons he has. Let's have take a quick look at what he's got. He's got a decent iron set, so he'd probably use a three iron. I can't see why he would use a three wood. A three wood's much harder club to hit off the deck. And he's using a three wood anyway. All right. It's a good shot it's on the green. You can safely two putt from there. You'll still make a birdie. All right, me on the other hand, I'm looking at 208 plus six feet up the hill, so I'll be playing it at 210. So I'll add just a touch of backspin with a four iron and aiming just to the right of the flag to bring the ball back alright I was just a bit early on the ding and that shot is now starting on the left of the flag and for some reason it's horribly short I I don't agree with that I hit a 210 yard club into a very gentle breeze it should have at least gone 205, 206. I've been playing this game for a while, so, I mean, two years. I know my distances. Uh, I've been playing this game for, yeah, August 2016 I started. That's a good putt. A little bit stronger, he would have actually sunk it. Alright, so we've got a break here from the left. Uh, yeah, it's going to be all the left. It's It straightens out a little bit right there near the hole, but we need to be aiming about three feet outside of the hole over here. Bring it back. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. Yeah, that's in. Oh! Alright, as you can see, my putt was very, very close, um, so I, I do know what I'm doing when I'm aiming and reading the grid. Alright, so, so far, neck and neck with this guy. We, on the previous hole, as I was explaining, uh, the previous time we played, we played earlier, and uh, I did, he forfeited because I was really too far ahead. Alright, so for this shot, we're going over the water. No, no, not over the water. My apologies. But we will be aiming in the middle of the fairway, slightly to the left, because it is sloping a bit to the right. Let's have a look. Yeah, you see, if it bounces here, it's going to roll this way to the right, where I'm showing you. So I'll be aiming just to the left to keep it a bit safe from that area on the right. A little bit early on the ding, but it should be fine. And as you can see, it is rolling to the right because of that slope. That's a huge drive. Another huge drive, 347 yards. <clears throat> Leaving me with a gentle wedge to the green. Another lofty drive, that's going to be about 320. All right, he's getting it close every single time now. The previous game, we had quite severe wins at uh, St. Andrews, so I think he was struggling with those wins. He's doing much better now that the winds are very gentle. All right, 113 yards. I'll be taking a pitching wedge here with full backspin at about 98% power. Wind is just ever so gently from the left. And the slope is going to the right, so if the ball rolls a little bit, I want it to roll towards the flag. 
Uh, yeah, 100 and make 98% power. I've got the ding terribly wrong there. It was lagging just a, just a touch and that cost me... That's going to cost me dearly because that ball is not as close as I wanted it to be. Now I'm going to be left with a tricky 12 foot putt. 11 feet. Not what I wanted. Every now and then my phone lags, so that sometimes causes me to miss the ding. Alright, anyway, let's see what we can do here. I need to, I need to get this in. I, I can't have the pressure of him. Get in, get in. Oh, dear. Alright. If he sinks this, he's going to take a one-shot lead. His will be coming from the left. He's on the opposite side to where I was. All right, he takes a one-shot lead. Okay, so now this is a good opportunity for me to play under some pressure of being a shot behind and see if I can catch up. This drive of his is going to go about 335, 340 because it's a tailwind. Oh, that's that's very, very short considering that he had a bit of a tailwind there. Okay. Anyway, I'm expecting mine should go about 335, 340. Give it a little bit of loft just to fly a bit. And uh, yeah, we want to get this pretty close. We'll be aiming over the water. This is quite risky what I'm doing. But uh, yeah, I'll be aiming there with the hope that it lands, stops over here somewhere, about 335. So I'll be aiming just on the edge of the water. Hit the ding under some pressure. And let's see what happens. 335-ish is what I was looking at. That's a huge drive. Pretty much spot on. All right, 85 yards. He's proven himself to be pretty good from these distances, so I expect he will get this next shot very close as well. Alright, didn't vibrate this time, so it's still a good shot. I'm not sure why the game didn't uh, make that shot the one where it vibrates and pulses. Anyway, 62 yards. I'll be using a 60 yard wedge with just a touch of backspin. We've got a tailwind. So this is a fairly straightforward shot. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, quite a stiff breeze blowing the wind seems to have picked up it was like four to six miles an hour earlier now we're looking at nine to eleven and uh, full power should land me very very close to the hole phone was lagging again I don't know if you can see the swing meter there but it was definitely lagging um, yeah would have been nicer if it didn't spin back so much I just used a touch of backspin anyway so it's me to hit first. Apparently, he's slightly closer than I am. And this will putt. This putt will break ever so gently from the left when it gets closer to the hole. Solid putt. All right, birdie. I needed to make this birdie because if he, he makes a birdie, he still stays one shot ahead of me. If he misses, then we are level again. So I could not afford to miss that putt. Alright, so he maintains his one-shot lead. Four holes down.
Right, 211 into the wind. We need to add about six yards. So I'm going to be using full, almost full backspin here. And aiming slightly to the right because the wind is coming from the right to the left. And uh, 216, yeah, I'll use about 97% power. Oh, I don't know where this thing started lagging and then... Oh my gosh, this is terrible. Well, bring your shovel and bucket. It started lagging and I got a little bit anxious and I clicked the button early. That ball didn't move an inch in the wind. Something fishy is going on here now. All my shots are lagging still. And I'm going to very likely lose this game now. Alright, I'm now two shots behind and uh, losing hope that I can actually win this game. It's quite ironic because when I played him earlier, I was three shots ahead of three after three holes. So now he is two shots ahead after, what have we got, four more holes left. I've got a chance to come back, but the only way for me really to come back is if he makes mistakes where I make birdies. And why he's taking so long to tee off. You only get two of those warnings in the game, so that's one gone. If he does it again, he will be disqualified. Interesting thing, when we started playing this game, the... Um, the wind was very, very gentle, four, I think four to six miles an hour. Now we're suddenly sitting at 10 to 12, so, yeah. All right, he's driven his tee shot into the rough. This is my opportunity now to take advantage because it'll be difficult for him to make a, a, a birdie again from the rough. So I need to now make something happen. So I'll be aiming into the bunker over here and the wind will make the ball drift in this area over here. So aim into the bunker. And let the ball drift to the right. And that's pretty much spot on where I wanted it. That's a huge drive. All right, so my opponent is in the rough. Um, let's see how good he is. Yeah, that's okay. Short. Leaving him 30, 31, 32 foot putt. Alright, this is my opportunity to get it close and take back a stroke. So, a little bit of backspin. 60 yard wedge. Aiming to the left to compensate for that wind. And we'll be hitting it about 50. 252 and a half yards power so that is about that's 54 so we'll be hitting just underneath there I don't know what is up with me today I'm hitting this thing very early and it's starting to get quite annoying 
anyway, I can probably make that putt, but I expected it to be much closer. All right, he's still putting for birdie. Still got a massive lead, uh, a comfortable lead. And he's done well. He's gotten it close. Mm. All right, my turn. And it's not an easy putt. I would have preferred to be a bit closer. Now I've got this terrible view. I don't have a great view on the pin. As you can see, the angle when I turn it this way, the angle isn't as comfortable as I would like. So i am just got to deal with what I've been given and hope that it goes in. All right, birdie time. I've claimed back one shot, got three more holes to claim back one more shot to force a tie and if I can possibly claim back another shot I would take the lead. But uh, yeah, this is, this is a good example of a tough game. Alright, now because I won the previous hole, it's my turn to tee off first again. So this shot we're going to look at, it's going to go about 315, maybe 320. Heading into the wind. I am awful today with the ding. I don't know why. I'm feeling a bit twitchy. And there we go, 315, 319. Alright, I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. Alright, so my opponent had a, a laid up with his three wood. I will be going for the green because I have I have to take a risk. Because um, I need to claim back a shot still. So I'm aiming to the right of the green. Maybe a bit more than that. The ball's got to fly quite far. Um, with some backspin to get the ball to stop quickly. And uh, yeah, we'll be hoping it lands on the green. Hit the ding perfectly. Yet the ball didn't seem to start exactly where I aimed. And yeah, that's a, that's a damn good shot still. Although that would have been better if it if it went started more right than I initially aimed because if you look where I aimed and you look with the the path of the ball it wasn't the same. Anyway, I've got an eagle putt, guaranteed birdie, but I have to go for the eagle. Alright, he's come up a bit short. If he misses that putt and I get a birdie, we are going to be level again. If he misses that putt now and I get an eagle, I will take a one-shot lead. So, yeah, this is, this is quite a crunch moment in the game. We are getting close to the end. Okay, so he's missed the putt. If I sink this eagle, I will take the lead. Putt's definitely going right to left only. And pretty gently, I'll be aiming just one cup width outside. Maybe just a touch more. The green seems to accelerate from left to right. All right, let's give it a go. Drop, come on. Alright, so I just narrowly missed that. I should have aimed even more. I had some doubts about the break. Anyway, so I'll still get a birdie. This will level the scores again with two holes to play. So it's a good example of how to make a comeback. Not to crumble under pressure. Okay, so two holes to play. We've got a very, very, very long par three over here. I'll be hitting this shot full power into the wind. Got to aim to the right. Let the ball drift back in. Here we go. And the swing meter was lagging. I don't know if you could see it there, but it caused me to mistime the ding again. Plus the fact that I'm twitchy. As you can see, the distance was spot on. 
220 out of 219 yards. Um, if I had not missed the ding, it probably would have been a bit closer. Right, my opponent tees off. His ball does not seem to be affected by that wind. It's almost going dead straight. But very short, very, very short. That's going to leave him with, what, about 42, 43 feet putt. 43 feet, there we go. Alright, he's got a close putt here, possibly in the hole. I think that's going in. Well done. Alright, this puts me under a lot of pressure again because now I've got a, <laughs> a hell of a sloping putt here. This is not easy. But I did it under pressure, even though I missed the ding. Alright, so as you can see the scorecard, riddled with circles and squares. 27-27, one hole to play. Final hole, the match is currently tied. Alright, so this drive I'm expecting will be in the region of 330 plus. Alright, here we go. Add a bit of heart to this. I want the ball just to fly a bit more. I'm hitting that ding terribly early. The, the phone is lagging and it's just causing me to, to go for it early because it feels like if I try to do it on time, then I, would, uh, then I would miss it heavily to the right. And I don't want to miss it to the right because the ball will then drift even worse with the wind. That is blowing from the left. That's a huge drive. All right, so both of us have a hundred hundred odd yards to the flag. Um, approach shots. The winner of this hole wins the game, but if it's tied, then we will go to a closest to the hole playoff. I think that's short very short what happened there I have <laughs> well I think he's thrown the game away all right I'll be taking a sand wedge and I guarantee it will not be short and I'm almost guaranteeing that I will actually put it close to the flag so expect a vibration we're going to be using about 96 yards power because there is a wind behind us and the ball will push the ball forward the ball, the wind, will push the ball forward a few yards. Right, there's the vibration I promised. And it went heavily to the right. I, I don't I don't think that ball started where I aimed. Because you saw I was aiming to the left. Why the ball drifted so far to the right, it's almost a dead-on tailwind. There's no reason it should. I'm going to go back and look at that video again once I'm done with it. And uh, I don't think it was accurate. I think I got cheated there by the game. You have a look at it, you decide. Leave a comment below if you think that that shot should have been closer to the flag. Alright, so now my opponent has put the ball right next to the pin. Guaranteeing himself a par. I need to sink this to win the game. So that we don't go into a playoff. 
and once again I've got a tricky putt that is coming in from the left definitely gonna have to go to the left over here see those few lines in front of the ball moving from left to right and then there were the flag that just seemed to go back to the left but there's more left to right than right to left so we're gonna want to aim just outside the edge over here maybe just a touch more and give it some steam Alright, I win by one shot. So there's a great example of being down by two shots and then end, ending up winning on the very last hole. You can come back from a, from a two shot deficit and I've proven it. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, if you did, please leave a comment below and uh, please subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.